all and welcome to today's webinar, COVID-19's impact on China vitamin industry. This is Kay from Cucumber and by my sign is Liko. Cucumber is a leading market intelligence provider based in China since 2001. Hello everyone and it's my pleasure to be here. This presentation will give you an overview on the carbon vitamin market situation in China, provide an outlook for the impact of COVID-19 on China vitamin industry, and demonstrate an opportunity for your own effective vitamin market research in China. If you have any questions, please write them down in the chat box or send to your account manager so that we can gather them after the presentation and reply you by email and we will record this webinar, upload to YouTube, and send you the link later. All the information we provide are from our brands, CCM and Chanalysis, and all the information is sorted by CCM. You can review the exit entry policies and measures and relevant local news during COVID-19 pandemic in different countries. And you can also understand the industry development in China under COVID-19 by reading our researchers' insights on CCM Impact Factor platform. And CCN has online platform covering agricultural, chemical, and food and food industry. You can get the industrial reports, newsletters, and market data on CCN becoming online database. Another branch analysis provides import and export analysis, such as import export price, quantity, origin or destination country, specification, treatment, manufacturers, buyers, and so on. And we will visualize the analyze into different charts and graphics. Don't forget to contact our team if you would like to know more about the problems. Right, and the agenda today is as follows. First, we have an overview of the vitamin industry, and then we will talk about the dilemma of operation and the government's long-term measures under the COVID-19. And next, we will discuss about the progress of resuming production of China vitamin industry. And besides, we will talk about the trends and features of China vitamin prices from January to April 2020. And next part will be the partial vitamin varieties related to COVID-19 epidemic prevention and control. What's more, we will discuss the changes of China vitamin export situation from January to February 2020. And at the end, we will also like talk about the new chance for China vitamin industry under the impact of COVID-19. Without further delay, let's go into the topics. Hmm. As you are aware, China is the world's largest vitamin producer, and China's output of vitamin accounts for more than 75% and the API outputs accounts for over 60% among the world's total. And according to the China Big Industry Association, 11.92 million tons of fig additives was produced domestically in 2019, among them were 1.27 million tons of free grade vitamins, up by 40.7% from 2018. China's major players in the vitamin industry are Garden, Yifan, Hubei Guangxi, CSPS, PC, etc. Specifically, Garden is the world's largest vitamin D3 producer that has the capacity of 2,000 tons per year. Yifan is the largest vitamin B5 producer and its capacity of vitamin D5 reached to 12,000 tons per year. Guangxi is the largest vitamin B2 maker that has the capacity of 4,800 4, tons per year. CSPC is the China's largest vitamin C exporter and its capacity reached to 40,000 tons per year. Some foreign countries are also major producers and exporters of vitamin. For instance, Germany has a vitamin A account for 60% of the global market share Switzerland's vitamin E has 20% of the global market share, and the United Kingdom has a vitamin B5, which to 15% of the global market share. India has a vitamin B3, which to 20% of the global market share, and South Korea has a vitamin B2, accounts for 80% of the global market share. Four months into 2020, COVID-19 has reached around the world 
As you can see on our platform in Pathfinder, at present, the epidemic in China has been brought under control, while some European countries and the US have become the hardest hit areas, and India will become the hardest hit areas, which undoubtedly poses a challenge to the global production and supply of vitamins. Yes, the coronavirus brought many difficulties to our vitamin producers. After the Chinese New Year, various provinces and cities in China issued notice of delayed resumption of work in February 2020 under the impact of epidemic. And most of the requirements for resumption of work in various places are not earlier than 2400 February 9, 2020. And Hubei province, which has a severe epidemic situation, requires all kinds of enterprises to resume work no earlier than 2400 on February 13. Therefore, the resumption date of domestic vitamin manufacturers has been delayed for at least nine days. And the shortage of the raw materials is also a big problem. The supplies of raw materials in producing vitamin in China are relied on import, taking vitamin D3 as an example. Junotin is one of the long-sistlery materials for the production of vitamin D3. The import of Chinese junotin mainly comes from European and American countries. From January to February 2020, China's total import of junotin is 895.36 tons. France, Uzbekistan, uh, Germany, the United States, and Spain have been the top five countries that China imported Junotin from. And the lockdown of cities and the limitation on export to prevent and control the epidemic, China's Junotin market is in short supply, and domestic vitamin D3 manufacturers have to raise prices. Right, what's more? Vitamin companies have to face the difficulty with transport. In February 2020, the COVID-19 epidemic led to the stagnation of domestic chemical logistics transportation, and it was difficult for vitamin manufacturers to ship. Guangxi, that located in Hubei, said that the shipment were blocked due to the severe epidemics. Since the goods cannot be sent out, customers consider preferential procurement from the overseas and the company's overseas market was affected. Starting from March 2020, due to the control of the domestic epidemic in China, the chemical logistic transportation has been partially restored. And another thing vitamin companies have to face is the unfavorable foreign trade situation. About 70 to 80% vitamin production in China are for export. In order to prevent and control the COVID-19 epidemic, Many European and American countries have lockdown policy, along with their imported products being strictly quarantined, and certain restrictions have been imposed on import trade. At the same time, the COVID-19 epidemic slowed down the economy growth of European and American countries. China's pharmaceutical, chemical, textile and apparel and other major foreign trade companies encountered a sudden drop in overseas orders and cancellations. And vitamin companies face an unfavorable export environment. In order to alleviate the adverse impact of the epidemic on the transportation industry, Chinese governments have adopted a number of measures to promote the recovery of transportation, like the notice issue on February 15, and March the 3rd, and the announcement issue on March 6th on the charges and fees. And the notice on phase reduction of port charge standards and other matters on March 9th. From March the 1st to June 13th, the two port operating service charge standards for cargo charges and port facility security charges set by the government will be reduced by 20%. Perspectively. And general administration of custom took measures to stabilize the foreign trade, like simplifying the custom clearance process and the supporting materials, and like reduce some fees and carry out special training to guide the enterprises. 
China has taken a number of measures to promote the resumption of work and production in an orderly manner and achieve good results. As of March 28, operating rate of China's industry enterprises above designating size reached 98.6%, and that of Hubei was 95%. The production and operation of some API companies with competitive advantages in China in producing antibiotic, antiparatic, and analgesic have returned to normal. And the rate of resumption of work and the rate of major products reached more than 80%. From the progress of resuming production of China retirement industry under COVID 19, from January to April 2020, we can see that no matter it is Guangxi Pharmaceutical Company located in one of the epidemic stricken areas, Hubei Wuxue, or it is Zhejiang NHU Company, whose logistic is affected by epidemic, with the support and instruction of the government and local health committee, as well as the efforts of the company themselves, their production are back into normal gradually. Yes, there is no doubt that the price was affected by the epidemic. Let's review the trends and features of China vitamin prices from January to April 2020. So the first four months, price of vitamins in China kept January stable first and then went up. During the Spring Festival, it remained stable due to the inactive market. And after the holiday, price gradually rose because of the outbreak and price of vitamin D3 as well as other products have shot up in March and April. We can see the features of vitamins those leading the price rising chain, like varieties with higher capacity concentrations such as vitamin A and vitamin D3, varieties for epidemic prevention and control such as vitamin C and vitamin D, Varieties those lack of raw materials, such as vitamin B3 and vitamin D3, and production discontinued varieties, such as vitamin B7, B1, and vitamin E. The export price of vitamin A fig grade went up in April by around 55% compared with that in January, while fig grade went up by around 43%, and the export price of vitamin B1 Fig grade went up in April by around 78% compared with that in January, and the fig grade went up by around 70%. Pharmaceutical grade also went up by 70%. Wow! Right, you see the top five increase of average range as work price in April compared to those in January. Uh, vitamin D3 fig grade, vitamin D3 uh, fig grade and vitamin B7 fig grade, vitamin B7 fig grade, and vitamin B1 fig grade. You mentioned the variety of epidemic prevention and control is also leading to price rise. Let's go to our next part. Partial vitamin varieties related to COVID-19 epidemic prevention and control. First, let's take a look at vitamin C. A notice on further guaranteeing the supply and safety application of clinical drugs was issued on 22 January by the Division of Drug Administration of Shanghai Municipal Health Commission and Shanghai Municipal Clinical Pharmaceutical Management Quality Control Center. It is said that vitamin C can be used as a prophylactic drug for clinical practice. According to the overseas report, New York Presbyterian Hospital is using vitamin C to treat COVID-19 patients. For severe patients, they will receive intravenous injection of vitamin C. It is reported that patients who receive vitamin C treatment are in much better condition than those who do not, due to the depression in domestic vitamin market. The inventory is low, and producers have risen their prices in March and April. As a result, the S prices of vitamin C, which is 99% powder fig grade, went up in April, but over 55% compared with that in January. 
speaking of epidemic prevention and control, vitamin D3 should also be mentioned. A research report published in Immunifarmco on December 2019 pointed out that vitamin D may be effective in the treatment of RNA virus infection in all. Mm -hmm. And as the no coronavirus is the kind of RNA virus, professors believe that vitamin D can boost immunity and protect against COVID-19. Vitamin D3 is a necessary nutrient in animal feeds. And according to domestic institution, the global annual consumption of free grade vitamin D3 is about 8,000 tons and the annual demand growth rate is about 2 to 3 percent. Why the annual demand growth rate of food grade and pharmaceutical grade vitamins D3 surpass 10 percent? After a decline since 2019, the inventory of vitamin D3 in the domestic market is at an extremely low level. In April, Garden Biochemical stopped coating and Zhejiang Weishi and as well as Taizhou Haisheng raised their quotation significantly. The export price of vitamin D3 big grade in April increased by almost 200% compared with that in January. Okay, we talked a lot about the domestic market. Our audience must be curious about the export situation under the impact of COVID-19. So, what are the changes in vitamin export? Well, it's a good question. China's vitamin export situation was weak in the first two months. The vitamin export volume from January to February was 41,270 tons, a decrease of 2% from the 42,182 tons from the same period last year. And the export value was 329 million US dollars, which was 15% lower than the same period last year. And the end of January 2020 coincided with the Chinese New Year holiday. And you know that during the holiday, domestic vitamin manufacturers routinely stopped the production. And manufacturers and, and the traders generally stopped shipping. But the COVID-19 epidemic in late January has prompted increased enthusiasm for overseas downstream users to purchase. That's pushed up the returning prices overseas. So why the export was weak in January to February? Multiple reasons. Domestic vitamin manufacturers have delayed the resumption of work due to the coronavirus. Transportation was restricted. And as a result, the fulfillment of the export orders signed previously delayed. At the same time, the export of vitamins by domestic traders was also adversely affected by the epidemic. That's why the whole vitamin industry export was weak in January to February. It was nothing that among these vitamins, the export volume of China's vitamin C increased by 11% year on year in January to February 2020, while the average export price fell sharply by over 45%. China is the world's largest producer and exporter of vitamin C, and you know that. And but since January 1st, 2020, China canceled their license administration measures on vitamin C and some other export of goods. The export volume of vitamin C have remained high and the export price has continued the trend of 2019, which was out of step with the volume. We can see that the epidemic will inevitably slow down the global economy. Big industry, food industry and other industries downstream of vitamins will be also adversely affected. In addition, China's major foreign trade companies such as pharmaceuticals, chemicals, machinery and electronics, textile and apparel, and light industrial technology have suffered a sudden drop in orders, and some orders have been cancelled. China's vitamin exports are facing challenges from the global COVID-19 outbreak. So the last part, let's see the new changes and trends for China vitamin industry under the impact of COVID-19. In the short term, 
we can see that the production has been effective, but the domestic epidemic has been controlled. So it is expected that China's vitamin production will rebound slightly in the second quarter of 2020. And in the medium term, at present, the epidemic is still spreading globally, and the outbreak continues in the Europe and the United States, and it will slow down the global economic growth. The slowing demand on downstream is expected to have a medium-term adverse impact on the China's vitamin exports. And under COVID-19, China's strict environmental regulations on highly polluting industries such as pharmaceuticals and chemicals are hard to loosen, which will prompt the vitamin industry to speak up the elimination of outdated production capacity. And it will also enhance their resistances to false major events such as this kind of outbreak. In response to the prevention and control of the COVID-19 epidemic, the quality requirements and inspection and quarantine of vitamin feed additives, food additives, and vitamin additives for medical use in European and American countries will be stricter. If the requirements of overseas market standards, domestic vitamin industry standards will be improved and product quality requirements will also be further improved. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you all very much for attending, and we hope you could get some key points out of the presentation. If you have any questions left, please write them down in the chat box or send to your account manager. We'll get back to you by email as soon as possible. All the information was enabled by our brand CCM and Chainalysis. If you want to find out more, I recommend you to have a look at our website and contact our team to get further information. We will have more upcoming webinars and you can also give your suggestions to your account manager. Thank you all again and have an awesome day. See you in our next webinar. Thanks. Bye.